This video will show you how to do some basic switch configurations. Most of these commands can also be used for basic router configurations. Here I have Packet Tracer opened up, and I'm going to choose a multi-layer switch. Multi-layer switches operate at layer 2 and layer 3. So what this means is that they can do all of the normal functions that a switch will do for us, but they will also provide some routing. I'm going to go into the command line of this router here. And right now I'm in what's known as a user exec mode. There's not a whole lot you can do in user exec mode, but if you ever need to figure out which commands are available for you, you can always hit the question mark key, and the question mark key will give you an output of which commands are available. I'm going to get into um, privilege mode, which you can get to by typing enable. One thing you'll notice with the Cisco IOS is you can pretty much shorten almost every single command. To get into privilege mode, I could just type in EN, for example. So you can shorten a lot of your commands. Another thing you can do is you can hit your tab key, and your tab key will attempt to finish off the command that you are typing. So if I hit EN and I hit tab, it types enable for me. So those are some, those are some quick shortcuts that you can use. I'm going to go into global configuration. Global configuration you can get to by typing in configure terminal. I always like to shorten that by typing config t. Inside of global configuration, this is where you will do most of your commands that are going to globally change something on the switch or the router. For example, changing the host name or adding a route to the routing table or configuring an IP address on an interface. These are all done in global configuration. Back in privileged mode, this is where you do most of your show commands uh, to view things on the router or the switch, like a show IP route to view the routing table, or a show run to view the running configuration. Uh, you could do a show version to see the version of the iOS that we're running. You could do a show flash to see what's inside of the flash memory. All right, going back into global configuration here, uh, you're going to do some pretty universal commands that you would see on switches or routers. Uh, one is the host name. The host name will supply a host name to this switch, and we'll notice the change reflected on the command prompt. Host names are important because those are used to telnet back and forth from devices, and they also give an indication of what that device maybe is used for, maybe where it's located. So I'm going to call this TC switch because it's in the tech center. And you can see how that changes on the command prompt here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is secure this switch a little bit uh, by entering in some passwords. First password I'm going to do is in my line console 0. The line console 0 is your console port that we have to initially use to configure any router or switch. So we're entering a password for when we very first initially get into this router. So I'm going to make the password Cisco. We want this password when we log in. Just to show you where this password is entered, here's a good example of the device trying to tell net to a host name. I accidentally typed in end in the wrong place, and it's going trying to find uh, a host that's named N. So it's sending out a broadcast trying to find a host named N to Telnet and connect to. So that's why our host names become important for us. So here I exited all the way out of the router or the switch and I can see here that um, it says press return to get started and when I press return to get started it's asking me for that line console 0 password I just set up. So I type it in and now I have access. The next password I'm going to set up is for Telnet. These are known as my line BTY or my virtual terminal lines. I'm going to type in line BTY04. So I'm setting up five connections for Telnet that will use this password. I'm going to make the password Cisco again here. And I want that when I log in. Uh, the next password I'm going to set up is my enable password and this is when you get into enable mode or privilege mode and I'm going to set this one up as Cisco as well. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is if I do a show run notice I can 
do any show commands in global configuration if I type the do command. But do show run here shows all of my passwords in plain text, which is not very secure. So what we want to do is we want to encrypt those passwords. So in order to do that, what you type in is service password encryption. And after I type that, now if I take a look at my running config, I can see that my passwords here are encrypted, making them more secure. One more password I'll, I'll mention here is the enable secret. I'm going to make this secret class. What this does for me is this secures my enable password in an even stronger form of encryption than the service password encryption does. So what a lot of administrators will do is they will just use that enable secret instead of using the enable password. Okay, so those are our passwords. The next thing I'm going to do is configure a banner. And a banner message of the day will display when someone attempts to log in. And maybe you want to display a message that there's going to be maintenance on the network that day, or maybe some type of warning message to try to deter attackers or hackers. I'm going to type in banner, MOTD. That stands for banner message of the day. Some sort of special character. I'm going to use the ampersand, but you could use the percent sign or dollar sign or um, almost any character that you wanted. Type some type of message here. I'm going to say warning, unauthorized use, prohibited. And then what I do is I type that same character. So whatever is in between your special characters is the message that will be displayed. The next thing I'm going to configure here is a switch virtual interface on interface VLAN 1. This is not something that could be done on a router. This is specific to a switch. So what I type in is interface VLAN 1. I type in the IP address that I want it to be. And I'm just going to make one up here and a subnet mask. And then to turn it on, I type no shutdown. By default, all interfaces are in the shutdown mode. So to turn it on, you type no shutdown to take that out. And I can see that my interface VLAN 1 has changed state to up. This interface VLAN 1 could be used to remotely manage this switch. We could telnet into that IP address and now remotely manage the switch without having to be counseled in. The next interface I'm going to configure is my interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1. Since this is a layer 3 switch, I want this switch to do some routing for me. And in order to do that, I need to make this port a non-switch port. So I type in no switch port. Now I can give this interface an IP address just like I would just like I would give an interface an IP address on a normal router. Put the subnet mask in there. Oops. Have to use a different address than the other one I already used. Put it on a different network. Turn it on with the no shutdown. And now it's an interface that can be used for routing. So what the no switch port command does for me is it makes that port a routed port instead of a standard switch port like they are by default. The last thing I need to remember to do here is to save my configuration. So I'm going to exit out into privileged mode. So what I notice here is if I do a show start that there is nothing present. So if this switch got restarted, there's going to be no configurations to load and the switch is going to be cleared and have none of the commands that I've typed in saved. So to do this, I want to copy my running configuration, which has all of my commands in it currently, to my startup config. So it's copy running dash config to startup dash config. And I just save that with the default file name. A copy run start 
would do the same thing for me. It's just a shortened version of that command. So now if I do a show start, it has all of my configurations in there. And that's identical to my show run. That's all for this video. Hopefully after watching this you have an idea of some of the basic switch commands and you have an idea of how to navigate through some of the different switch modes, user exec, privilege, and global configurations. If you have any questions about configuring a switch or get stuck with anything, please let me know. Thanks for watching.